Hey everyone, it's Tyler of Buyer Savers. I want to show you guys really quick how to go about the art of lining up your pieces. Essentially, what we're going to be doing is altering the faces of the part to change the thread timing. So like if you have your emitter and you screw it on and you want it to line up straight on with it instead of sideways, I'm going to show you how to take care of that. Okay, so basically, if you've got your buttons up front and you want this to be either this way or more like that, where the forks are pointing towards the front, that is going to determine whether you need to add or remove material. If I want to clock it this way, that would mean I don't want it to screw on as far. So we need to add material. Well, the way to add material is to add timing shims. So when you add a timing shim, that changes the location of this shoulder down here. You're adding material to it, therefore it's going to stop shorter as you thread it on. So I've added two timing shims onto this. As you can see, I've still got a little bit more to go. So I'm going to add one more. And we sell our timing shims in packs of five. That's usually enough to get you where you need to go, unless you need to make a drastic movement. But there you go. So this is three timing shims, and now this is facing towards the front. Now, sometimes you might overshoot it by just a little to the point where if you add one, it's too far, and if you don't add one, it's not quite far enough. So in that case, you would want to add one, and then you want to remove a slight amount of material. That's where the sandpaper comes into play. So I'm going to show you the opposite end of that, where we want it to screw on farther. So we're just going to take out all these timing shims, and we're going to take a look with no timing shims. It's quite a bit of a ways to go from here to here, but we should be able to do it with the sandpaper. We do sell these sheets of sandpaper on the site. I think it's 320 grit. I mean, you can use pretty much any sandpaper you want. I just like this stuff because it's adhesive backed. So if you've got a nice flat workbench or something, you can peel off the back paper and you can stick it down to it. This is extremely helpful when you are lapping the face of this with the sandpaper. Okay, so... You don't want to go too aggressive with this because it can remove a lot of material quickly and then you've gone too far and then you have to add shims and lap even more. The male threads are generally a little bit shorter than the depth of the female thread. So sanding the male thread won't change anything internally because you're still meeting this shoulder to this shoulder right here. So that's basically what you're looking at. So if you sand the male threads here, nothing will change because these two shoulders are still in contact in the same place. I'm just going to real lightly put in a little bit of downward pressure and you want to keep it nice and flat. And want to move in circular patterns. Now you can see that this has already taken off most of the anodize. Give it a little wipe. Make sure this surface is clean because if you've got some kind of debris in between, then it'll give you a false, you'll screw it together. And if it's getting hung up on like a little piece of grit, then it's going to seem like it's stopping shorter than it really is. Where if you clean it off, then it'll go all the way together. So we got quite a ways to go. I always recommend just do a little bit out of time until you get the feel for it. Because it's way easier to take a little more material off than it is to put it back on. Just going to check it again, and we've still got quite a ways to go. Usually you won't have this far to go, it's just in this particular case for the video I chose one that was extremely far off. I would usually opt to just add extra timing shims so that it goes the other direction, but you know, some people might really be specific that they want it facing a certain way, so. Alright, so I'm looking to bring this side in line with those buttons there. So got quite a ways to go. Getting closer. And this will kick up quite a bit of dust, so just be careful not to breathe that in. So in this case, you can see we're starting to get a little bit of a gap between here and here. And that means that we are in fact reaching the point where the male threads are starting to bottom out. So now that we've removed that material there, we can start removing some of the male thread. The male thread will go down a lot quicker because there's less material there, so be careful of that. Uh -huh. Alright, now see we only have just a little bit left to go there. So you're going to want to, when you get, start to get close like that, you really want to be careful to just do a little bit at a time. So give it a couple passes and then give it a check. Ooh, just a tiny little bit more. Yeah. So you can see that our fork is now lined up with the front end there. Usually you won't have to remove this much material. It's just, like I said, in this specific case, I purposely grabbed two parts that were really, really far off just to kind of give you the most extreme. Usually you're going to add one or two timing shims and then you might just have to gently touch it up just to get it perfectly lined up with how you want. And if you go too far, like I said, you'll have to add a timing shim to change the location and then sand it down a little bit more. So it, it can be recovered if you go too far, but you definitely, you don't need to kill it. Just 
little bit at a time is your best bet, and then you can have everything lined up exactly how you want it. So uh, thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions, let us know, and uh, as always, we'll see you out there. Just...